Squirting green slime, that is so cool. Are you not still playing that zombie game? Yeah, Ted, we're nearly up to game five. Oh, it is so difficult. I mean, every time you think you're getting somewhere, you get, your chainsaw clogs up with bits of zombie bones. The only way to unclog it is you gotta take out your axe. Axe? Yeah, hack their arms and legs off. Be careful not to split open their guts. <laughs> yeah, but the tricky bit is while all the green sludge is still squirting out of its neck, you, you use, use it to wash, wash your chainsaw. And that only clogs up. In my day, we had games like Monopoly and Scrabble. Today, it's Chop Up a Zombie, Blow Up a Supermarket, all in the name of entertainment. And what are those little eggs called? Tamagotchis. Yeah, toys that shit. I don't understand. Poor old Ted. Come on, sit down, have a go. No. Yeah, come on, Ted, this won't hurt a bit. No, I don't want to. Yes, you do. I don't like games that kill. Let the zombies live. Ted, the zombies are already dead. Oh. OK. Look out. Here comes one. Press that button. Yeah, that's it. Well done. You just lost off an arm. See, it didn't hurt a bit, but you better get his other arm, otherwise he's gonna get ya. Yeah, that's it. Now, now get his legs. Way to go, Ted. Now, pick up your axe. How do I do that? Here. Okay, now chop off his head. And um, don't I slice his guts first? Uh, there you go. You've just killed your first zombie. Gosh, I never knew being an axe murderer could be so much fun. <laughs> I'm running late. Has anyone seen my Diana Ross hairpiece? Is that the dark one? Okay, where is it, Ted? Well, after I wore it down to the supermarket today, I used it to plug up a hole in the roof to stop the vermin getting in. Ted, I'm serious. So am I. I looked all over the club last night and I couldn't find it anywhere. Well, maybe someone's borrowed it. Maybe Miss Ross repossessed it. You're not helping. Stop looking, everyone. I found it. What happened? Oh, are you okay? I, I, I was in a paranormal experience. Again? Well, I was just standing there, and my Diana Ross hairpiece was just lying there, and right before my very eyes, it just leapt right off the table. I don't blame it. If I had to sit on your head all night, I'd jump off too. Ted, I'm serious. It's just like it grew legs and just crawled away. Uh, are you sure it wasn't just the wind? Oh. Honey, I've had wind before, and I can tell you that was not the wind. Well, what do you think it was? Well, I was hoping this wouldn't happen again, but I think we've got another poltergeist in the house. So this has happened before? Well, sometimes, after a seance, a spirit gets trapped between the worlds. And if they're left to their own devices, they get up to all sorts of mischief. Like, well, last time, well, well, Liz, you know. It was so gross. It was like she'd had three too many E's. Oh, no, honey. That was when I was possessed. <laughs> well, the last time we had a poltergeist in the house, things just kept disappearing and turning up in the strangest of places. Yeah, like when we had that border and we found all the missing stuff in his wardrobe, except for upon his underwear. He was wearing that. So, how do you get rid of this poltergeist? Well, I have to perform an exorcism. Cool. How do you do that? Well, first, I must allow the displaced entity to enter my body. Does that mean you have to use a hose up in the bathroom again? Harry, there are certain things that are of a very personal and private nature. And it is inappropriate and unseemly to publicly discuss the highly intimate details concerning my rituals and disciplines pertaining to my gifts. 
Um, that means yes. Then the spirit enters my body and through me I lead them back to their rightful place on their own plane. Cool. So does your head spin around? Is there lots of green vomit? No, honey, that's only in the movies. Oh, and dance parties. A partner. Ted, if it's going to be coarse or vulgar, I don't want to hear it. I see. Um, do spirits have bodily functions? <laughs> what sort of bodily functions? Do they make dippity doo doos? What are you asking me that for? Well, if that's the case. Your hairpiece is just crapped on the kitchen floor, and it looks suspiciously like possum poop. Oh, of course, that would explain it. What? That so we've got an incontinent possum who thinks it's Diana Ross? No, it's possum mating season. He probably thinks Ipana's hairpiece is a little girl possum. Well, why do you assume that it's a he? It could be a lesbian possum. A short-sighted lesbian possum? I remember one year back on the farm, we had a possum that took a real shine to Dad's hat. It took it up into its nest in the hollow of an old gum tree. There's no way he was going to give that hat back. Well, it looks like you're not getting your hairpiece back, I thought of. Uh, not necessarily. Well, the, he carted it around for a little while, but we eventually got Dad's hat back. See, possums love fruit. So we left some on the ground near the tree, and he came down at dusk, and when he was there we gave him a bit of a fright, and he took off back up the tree. Oh, well that's just dandy. So where's this old gum tree with the hole in it? Well, the possum lives in the ceiling, and he gets in through the hole behind the water heater in the kitchen, and climbs up on the inside wall of the cavity. Well, possums are very passionate lovemakers. Uh, if you want to get your hairpiece back, we'd better not mess about, otherwise there's not going to be much of it left. After he's finished with it, I'm sure you'd look more like Bob Marley than Diana Ross. Hey, everybody, guess what? Dog, a possum has eloped with my Diana Ross hairpiece. Don't be silly, I saw Ted wearing it at the supermarket this morning. Guess what? I don't think you understand. There is a possum in the ceiling having intimate congress with my Diana Ross hairpiece. Get it's doing what? It's humping the hairpiece. Well, we don't actually know that that's what it's doing. No, he's probably just wearing it and miming to chain reaction. You'll never guess what happened to me today. I got a role in a movie. What? Oh, that's great! great. Yes. Good on you. Yeah, it's only a small speaking part, but at least it's a start. Dog, I always knew you'd get there one day. Has it got any big stars in it? Well, they haven't finished casting the main roles yet, but who knows, if I do a really good job of this, they may give me a shot in a big one. You've no idea what I'd do for a chance at a big one. Well, what's it about? Well, it's a classic rags to riches story. Boy from the ghetto finds true love in the arms of a corporate heavyweight. And that's it? It's sort of one of those smouldering art house alternative type films. It's not much of a plot. No, but it's more about atmosphere and human emotion. Smiley explains it a lot better than I can. Smiley? Yeah, Mr. McSmee. He's the producer and the director. He says he's had his eye on me for quite a while. Sounds familiar. Yeah, well, he says a cameo role like this might be just what my career needs. Imagine it, living under the same roof with a movie star. Oh. Yeah, can't you see it? Dog's name's up in lights, Bernard Felcher. <laughs> Bernard? Oh, Saint Bernard. Dog, I get it. I always wondered why they called you Dog. Well, actually, I was thinking about changing my name. What to, Dog Felcher? No, it's pronounced Felcher. <laughs> No, but I thought I'd change it to something more raw, masculine and sensual, yet refined. What about butt? Butt Felsher. Oh, I think it's a matter of personal taste, and personally that doesn't work for me. I don't know. It's got a ring to it. Uh, so, uh, what's the movie called? It's called The Young, The Hung, and The Gerbil. It's a catchy title, isn't it? it sort of really makes you think. I hope this movie doesn't involve any cruelty to animals. No way. The gerbil has a stunt double. Little Richard Gerbil was full of cunning stunts. He'd run up ladies, stocking legs, and bite them on the... Ted. Knickers. What's a gerbil? A small furry sex toy. Uh, Ted. Take no notice of him, honey. They're like little possums. You see, the main character has a pet gerbil he takes everywhere with him. It's his only friend. Oh, that's so sad. What part do you play? The gerbil's toy boy. I play Randy Rimmer. I've had a few of those in my day. 
He's a porn star. Oh, it's made for you, mate. Yeah, that's what I thought, but it's a lot more difficult than it appears. Why is that? Well, it's a very complex role. You see, Randy has just busted up with his boyfriend, who's a drug addict, and the mob are after him because he hasn't paid his drug bill. Oh, it sounds exciting. Yeah, and then he meets Philip, Philip McCrack. He's the one with the gerbil. He falls head over heels in love with him, but then he realises he still has feelings for his old lover, and he's torn between the two of them. Oh, the eternal triangle with a gerbil twist. And we start shooting tomorrow. This smiley person, he doesn't waste any time, does he? Well, it's been planned for ages. I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. The showers at the gym? Well, Mr McSmee says I have a huge potential. Ah, it was the showers at the gym. Anyway, we start filming on location tomorrow. Whereabouts? Well, he says he wants the film to have a gritty, urban, realistic feeling about it. So we're shooting at real places instead of sets. So, where will you be shooting? Well, we're starting off in a public toilet, but then we're moving the location to a motel room. Is this smiley guy on the level? Of course he is. Look, these scenes are pivotal to the whole story. It's an intense emotional sequence. And how much are you getting paid for this? Paid? Look, for this opportunity, I should be paying them. All the same, honey. Just be careful. I don't want you getting exploited. Don't worry, doll. I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself. I've heard that. Uh, so, do you have many lines to learn? Well, I only have one, so I have to do it really well. But it really has to work. So it's only a very quick scene. Well, no, I'm actually in it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes? But it's only one line? Well, it's an art film, Liz. There are a lot of visual sequences that don't need any dialogue. But only one line? But I get to say it over and over again. Like a mantra? Yeah. I think. Anyway, Mr. McSmee says he wants us to improvise. A lot of the great actors improvise. Olivier, Brando. M M McPherson, uh, Pamela Anderson. Yeah. So, what's the line? Oh, uh, no, I don't want to say it. I haven't rehearsed it properly yet. Well, honey, now's a good time to start. What, in front of everybody? Well, listen, tomorrow you'll be saying it in front of camera operators, technicians, lighting people, wardrobe staff. The gerbil. I mean, if you're going to make any little blunders, don't you think it's better to make them here, in front of your friends? Besides, we may be able to help you. Yeah! OK. I just better get myself into the right frame of mind. It's a very intense emotional sequence. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suck that big dick. That's it? No, I'm not finished yet. Suck that big dick. Go on, suck it. You know it. Mm. Well? Heavens, is that the time already? I'm on Possum Patrol. Harry, I think we've got a date with some zombies. Uh, if you've got the inclination, I have the chainsaw. Oh, guys. Honey, don't give up your night job. Come on, we're late. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Damn it. Stupid game. Problems? Every time I get up to this point, the same thing happens. They, they just come at you so thick and fast, there's no way you can win. Well, don't give up. I won't. I'll just cheat a bit. <laughs> That's very unsportsmanlike, Harry. Ted, we're dealing with the undead here. I mean, these dudes make up the rules as they go along. Somewhere out there on the internet, there must be somebody who knows how to put them in their place. Hi. Don't even ask. I had a cock of a day. Has a movie star arrived home yet? Not yet. I just have this terrible suspicion that things might not have gone too well. Mm, me too. Poor dog. People are always trying to take advantage of him. Oh, he's old enough to know the rules of the game. Hi, everybody. Hi, dog. How did it go? Awesome. Brilliant. What's it? Yeah, you'll never guess who they got to start it with me. Tom Cruise. What? Yeah, he's such a brilliant actor. He made me feel right at ease. And the nude scenes we filmed together, superb. I can't wait to see the rushes. And here I was feeling sorry for you. Anyway, I've got a rush. I'm having dinner with Tom and Nicole tonight. They're outside waiting in the limo. Outside here? Yeah. Oh, there's no limousine out there. Yeah, I know. Who said I couldn't act? All right, Lawrence Olivia. So what's the real story, dog? 
Well, they took me to this really sleazy motel. No, that's more like it. And he went to the bathroom, came out five minutes later, stark naked, holding his very frightened gerbil. <laughs> that sounds awful. What did you do? Well, I tried not to laugh when the gerbil bit him on the willy and ran out the door. <laughs> I spent all afternoon in casualty waiting for Smiley to get a tennis shot. Sounds like the gerbil needed the shots. <laughs> oh, here we go, Liz. A full page of cheat codes for Gates of Hell. Right. Try God mode. What do you want about? Oh, if you enter in a special code, it alters the game in your favour. If you enter the cheat code for God mode, it will make you invincible to your enemies, so nothing can harm you. What about that one? Never clog chainsaw. Oh, that'll do it. That should give us the edge we need. G O H four nine two. What was that? G O H four nine two. That's odd. Let's have a look at this. This is the note that fell from behind Gladys's picture. G O four. Four looks more like an H. Well, the parlour said the note had something to do with bundles of money and that the key was in the gate. G-O-H. Gates of hell. Don't you remember Gladys said at the seance, the answer is just a game? Well, we're getting into some really weird territory here, guys. Oh, what's that? There's some impressions on here. Punch in that code. <laughs> it's not going to work, Ted. That code was not on the list, you see? What's that? It looks like some sort of plan. It's a house plan. There's something moving. Look. It's going across there, down there. Now it's turning. Now it's going through here. Hi, everyone. And it's going into, into the, the kitchen. kitchen. We're talking some serious, major, spooky weird here, guys. It's coming back. What's cooking, you guys? Oh. You all look like you've seen a ghost. You're not too far from the mark. What's the red X? X marks the spot. Apollo, could you go back into the kitchen? What are we doing? A little to the left. A bit more. A bit more. That's it. Will somebody tell me what's happening? Oh. Wait a minute. This is a jug. <laughs> The one from Gladys's note. I think we may have struck pay dirt. I bet this is where it is. What? The money. <gasps> well, honey, show me the money. <laughs> Do you think we can get him behind it? No, Gladys had it bolted to the wall. I think I know why now. Uh, oh, there's definitely something in here. <coughs> oh, God. Dog, open up the top drawer. There's a screwdriver and a torch in there, mate. Could you get them for me? What is it? It's a door of some sort. Hang on. Yeah. What's in there? It's the possum's nest. And here's your hairpiece. Oh. I don't know if I want it anymore after what it's been through. Poor thing. So where's the money? And what's all this paper? Well, possums love to chew up paper. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Anybody for a game of jigsaw puzzles and possum pie? Well, it appears that Aunty Gladys has a few secrets hidden around the house. Today we found, I don't know how much money, that Aunt had stashed away for a rainy day. The only trouble was, a possum got to it first and Aunt's nest egg became the possum's nest. At least we got a partner's hairpiece back. But it makes me sick to think about how much money that blasted possum chewed up. Talk about passing the buck. Maybe it was all illegal money anyway. Yeah, that's the case. Ah, oh, the possum's welcome to it. I guess we'll never know. Oh, must go now. Love, Harry. P.S. I miss you. Oh, that's...
That wasn't very fair of you, Glad. What? Leading them on like that and then giving the possum the prize. <laughs> and they worked so hard, too. Hmm, if Smiley ever found out, he'd... Well, he can't do much to us now. But more to the point, what are we going to do about him? Absolutely nothing for the moment, Elsie. Why? Because I've been a very, very naughty... Naughty girl. <laughs> oh, and you know what we do with naughty girls, don't you, Glad? <laughs> oh, no. No, Elsie. Not the feather duster. 